My name is Professor Nora Colton, and I'm very happy to be here to speak to you about our uh, global healthcare management program. I've also got Karina here, who is a, a student on, on our program, and she'll talk uh, more uh, at the end to you as well. So uh, it's great to be here, and uh, I'm going to share my slides, and I'll take you through a, a presentation, and then um, please recognize that you've got a Q&A button at the bottom that you can uh, use to put questions. So you don't have to wait to the very end. You can ask questions as we go through and, uh, and then I can take them at the end. So let me just get my presentation up. Okay, so First of all, let me tell you a little more about the Global Business School for Health. We are the first business school in the world totally dedicated to educating health and healthcare uh, professionals and people who aspire to be in healthcare. We are a business school, but our focus is on health and healthcare. And some of our kind of unique step selling points, as it were, is that we're not just a, a business school for health. We're a very interdisciplinary uh, school. So we have people from lots of different backgrounds. We have engineers, we have people who've studied physics. Of course, we've got lots of people who've studied business, uh, finance, accounting. We also have people from the social scientists, you know, psychologists. Uh, we have people who are from economics background who teach health economics. So it's, the reason is, as an interdisciplinary department, we're much more focused on solving problems than thinking about disciplinary silos. And particularly, that's important when we think about healthcare, because historically, health and healthcare have been very siloed. So you have people who sit over in medicine, sit in pharma, sit over in public health, but these groups didn't work together. And of course, the problems that we face today in the world, things like climate change, um, you know, more and more people having cardiac uh, vascular disease, of course, cancer is on the rise worldwide, uh, you know, and, uh, and then also lifestyle diseases. You know, many of these uh, are factors that are contributed by things like our diet, our, our inability to exercise, too much time uh, on the computer. So we also look at those kind of behavioral change factors as well, both at the system, the organizational and the individual level. So the Global Business School for Health is really a very exciting place to study. And uh, of course, healthcare is the fastest growing sector in terms of employment in the world. So in the UK, for example, the NHS is the fifth largest employer in the world, not just in the UK. If we look over to the United States, we can see that in terms of labor market and jobs, health and health care are growing at an exponential rate, while other sectors are remaining quite flat, and the gap between them is growing. So this really is a critical and important factor, and, and if you're from China, or from India or any place in the world, you've got a young population that's aging and that will come with it, um, you know, lots of different factors, uh, you know, as people age, they will live longer, but they'll also have more comorbidities. We can't solve all these problems by just thinking about having more nurses and doctors. We need to think about how we can manage, what kind of pathways, how we can work together to solve these problems. So that's really at the heart of what we do at the Global Business School for Health. We have world leading ex experts uh, who are working on a number of projects, innovation, digital health, AI are, are also big focuses for us because that will be an important aspect of solving some of the questions and challenges around workforce for the health sector. The other thing that makes us really unique and makes doing a master's with us a, a, a very exciting proposition is that all our students on all our master's programs have the opportunity to do a business project. 
Now, why is that really important? Well, we want to really develop your innovation, your entrepreneurial mindset, um, and think much more about your ability to reimagine healthcare. So when you're on our uh, program in your third term, you'll have the opportunity to work with a group of uh, fellow students, come up with your own idea. It can be a, a health improvement. It can be a, a business idea. And we'll walk you through, you'll learn how to put together your business plan, how to put your pitch. And I have to tell you that we've had some tremendous successes through this project. Um, and it doesn't matter if you're on global healthcare management or, or digital health and uh, entrepreneurship or biotech and pharmaceutical management, all our master students do a business project. You also have the opportunity to cross your year to meet people in industry, practitioners. We have a very strong relationship with employers. In a few weeks, we'll be hosting uh, our first career festival for the, the year. So this is a dynamic environment. It's a dynamic school, and we are very focused on you and making sure that we graduate individuals who can make a difference to society, particularly in the health and healthcare space. And for all the reasons I've just mentioned, it's so important. So now let me switch gears a bit and tell you about our MSc Global Healthcare Management with Roots. This program, again, reflects our ethos and uh, was developed not just by people like myself who are academics, but by people who are, you know, in, in the thick of it, uh, practitioners. So we went out, we did an extensive survey of employers, not just in the UK, worldwide, asking them, what are the things that really keep you up at night? Who would be the people, if you could hire anyone, that you'd want to hire? And invariably, three things emerged. One was they needed good leaders, managers, people who were courageous, who understood not just theory, but could understand how to put it into practice. Could team players, people who understood teaming, who conflict resolution, people who could really solve difficult situations. So leadership is one of the routes that you can take on this program. And it uh, will equip you with lots of different skills to help you on your journey. You'll learn about power and politics. You'll also get strategy, but a uh, strategy from a health perspective. You'll uh, learn uh, about coaching and mentoring, which is so integral to being a leader and a manager in an organization today. I can assure you one of the most important things I do as the director of the Global Business School for Health is coach and mentor my staff. And then last but not least, you'll also have the opportunity to uh, take a course on innovation and change management. And innovation, you know, I hear from a lot of health prof professionals, they talk about how they need more innovation, they need better ideas in their organization, but they also need to know how to embed it. So one of the things you'll learn in that module is not just about all the exciting innovation that's available for healthcare, but how do we embed it? How do we actually get people to change? How do we get them to adopt new ideas? So that's uh, our leadership route. Then we have, of course, our finance route, which again, not surprising given that there's so much pressure in an uh, industry like healthcare, which is very people focused to keep costs down. And it's very difficult because uh, as we all know, across many uh, organizations and health systems today, we've got a lot of pressure around uh, wage inflation. Prices going up and organizations feeling challenged because of the pressures that having large staffs puts on them. So again, how do you balance between those pressures and uh, uh, innovations and technology. And so in your finance modules, you'll learn many things. You'll first learn financial management with a very much a health and healthcare focus. You'll get risk management, which is an important and, uh, area, particularly in the world that we live in, where we've got crisis as management as well. But this will be very much from a financial standpoint. 
You look at corporate uh, and you look at private and, and, and equity and uh, markets and understand things like mergers and acquisitions and how those markets work. You'll also then, uh, last but not least, you know, again, get that, you know, kind of value-based healthcare, that, that understanding different models uh, of funding and finance. So a very important, very important topic for really taking you into uh, an organization where you can operate at multiple levels and multiple jobs. And then the third uh, area that you can specialize in is, uh, of course, you know, around analytics. And, you know, this is a, a very much a focus with data science, an opportunity for you not to necessarily be a technocrat, but to be a manager and to understand these aspects. So this is, again, very much focused on management, giving you all the essential bits and pieces so that you can understand how to make decisions, how analytics work, how AI works, how they come into, you know, machine learning uh, to enhance your skills and abilities to make uh, decisions that are really focused on what will be the future of healthcare and, and AI innovation. All of this is going to be integral. So these are really exciting programs um, and routes that you can take. You'll also have some core modules, and I'll talk about those in just a minute as we move forward. This program really is a, a, an opportunity for you to gain uh, not just the narrow lens that I, I've articulated through the roots, but also to gain some wider experiences. Now, the admissions requirement for this program is that you have a 2-1 or above in, in, or equivalent if you're coming from overseas. The language requirement is a 6.5 or above, and you need at least a six in all your subtests. You'll have to write a personal statement, and we take your personal statement very seriously. Uh, you know, we we look at those to to really understand your motivation for wanting to be in a, a business school for health, and also to study uh, health. So we're very open in terms of what you did your bachelor's degree in but we're equally as interested in understanding if you're coming from an area where you haven't studied health before, why are you pivoting into health now? And what do you hope to gain from this program? And then last but not least, you'll have to provide a, a personal reference, ideally an academic reference uh, from a professor or a you know, lecturer who knows you well. So who is this program for? Well, as I've just said, we're, we're quite open to the idea because we're an interdisciplinary department. We take an interdisciplinary approach. So we don't feel that only certain groups of people or certain backgrounds can study um, healthcare management. But you have to have that driver. You want to excel. You want to be a change maker. You want to work in a healthcare setting. That, that's a really important. So you can be a new or recent graduate or you can be somebody who's already working in healthcare or uh, life sciences or, or business field, and you want to come back and, and expand your understanding, fill some gaps in your learning along the way. Um, and again, you might have some relevant work experience in healthcare that uh, is really driving you forward to, to engage in this program. As I mentioned, so in you'll have an induction program at the beginning of your our course. Uh, we also will do uh, some self-paced learning. We send all our students a, a global health module so that they can start to understand, particularly for students who are pivoting into healthcare, what the landscape looks like, what they can expect from the program. Then in term one and term two, they'll have a, a kind of a the same feel as it were. You'll take two of the core modules. So in your first term, you'll, you'll take one that's very much focused on health economics and one that's focused on leadership management as core modules. And then you'll take two of those specialized modules depending on which route you take. And then term two will be similar. You'll take two core modules. This time your core modules will be uh, an organizational behavior module with um, human resource management in it as well. And then you'll also have a, a, a second module that you'll you'll take in that, that term as well. 
that, uh, and these are really, uh, you know, designed and equipped to, to help you to uh, move forward in, in, in this uh, field. And then again, you'll, you'll have your specialized. And then I mentioned the business project too. And that really is our signature project that is about giving you that entrepreneurial mindset, helping you move forward in, in what you do and how you do things. And then last but not least is this research project. Now the research project is um, similar to a dissertation, but slightly shorter, but it's an opportunity for you to have a project uh, where you can go for a deep dive into a topic in, you know, that's ideally something that you got excited about through the program and you want to learn more about it and you will write that. You'll have a supervisor. Um, for both your business project and your research project, you'll have opportunities to attend workshops on Wednesdays in term one and term two to prepare for those final projects. You'll also have uh, opportunities in term three to continue to enhance your learning. Now, a lot of times students are concerned about funding. We've got a few scholarships in the department and we are trying to do everything we can to support students with scholarships. Um, there are also other or ways in which you can access money, but two of the scholarships that we have for our master students is one is a 5,000 pound scholarship for women healthcare leaders scholarship. And the other one is global healthcare leader scholarship. I highly encourage you to apply as soon as possible, um, not just to the programs, but you can also apply for the scholarships and uh, you can, um, you don't have to wait until you're accepted to the program. Of course, to take advantage of the program, uh, the scholarships, you have to get into the program because we will use the scholarships to reduce your tuition. Some other ideas and places that you can look for funding. If you're, in the UK, of course, the government has a, a graduate top funding program and scholarships that you can tip into. Um, also, there's an, a wider range of scholarships at UCL. And so you can see there, uh, there's a link there, but UCL Scholarship Finder, you just can Google UCL Scholarship Finder, go to that and see if you can find other scholarships you might be eligible for. If you're coming from the United States, you can use US federal funding to apply and fund your education at UCL. Um, there are also other scholarships, the Chevening, and we have a number of Chevening scholars uh, that study at the Global Business School for Health. There's Commonwealth scholarships, there's Fulbright, Great, and of course, mastery bursaries. Also, you should check in your home country. We have a number of students who come from countries where uh, their government helps to provide uh, scholarships, particularly for people in this kind of healthcare space. So I highly encourage you to research and look for what your funding options could be and ways that you might achieve that. The other question we often get is around career support. We start to support our students from the start. So it's really important, uh, you know, part of our induction is to introduce you to our career consultant for our master students. Uh, her name is Marianne Kiani. Miriam works tirelessly for our students. She will help you individually and as groups, um, you know, to find uh, career opportunities. Many of our students work part-time while they're doing their degree. I highly encourage you to get a job while you're in the QK, while you're doing your degree, work part-time, because it's an opportunity for you to start to understand the labor market in the UK. And particularly if you're thinking that you'd like to stay in the UK after you finish your degree. Then of course, we'll help you with trying to secure full-time work. There's also the career services, UCL Career Services. They have a, a number of workshop support that you can tap into. As I mentioned, we have industry mentors and you know people from industry that we bring to the school that you can meet with and talk to and network with. There's also what we have innovation and enterprise service at UCL. Um, 
we've had a number of students uh, in the past year who have secured places to grow their own businesses, their startups. A lot of them were their innovation ideas through their projects. And of course, UCL has hundreds of thousands of alumni around the world. They can network with you and help you uh, also on your career journey. We will do everything we can to help you meet and achieve your ambitions in terms of your career. Some of the career destinations that our students uh, look at are things like health consultancies. So of course, there's the four kind of big consultancies, PwC, Deloitte, KPMG, and EY, but there's also the Boston Consulting Group, McKinsey, and we, we have had students in the last year be successful in getting jobs in those organizations. Pharma is another area that students are very keen to work in, biotech. Of course, I mentioned the NHS, and, and but there's also private hospitals, there are insurance providers like BUPA, uh, there's the World Health Organization and other global equivalences, lots of small organizations here in the UK, startup companies that are constantly looking and priding themselves in hiring UCL graduates. So there's lots of opportunities and it's about uh, jumping in there, taking advantage of those and, and plotting your career alongside your degree. Of course, UCL is an amazing place. There's, it's, it's a large university. Uh, it's got a, a vibrant student union, um, literally hundreds of clubs and societies, sports groups that you can get involved in, um, volunteering, and again, volunteering can also be a way of helping you boost your CV. Uh, many of our students uh, volunteer in hospitals, in the NHS, um, as a way of, of getting a foothold. Uh, and then we have our student support and well-being. So particularly if you have any mental health issues or well-being or counseling service that you need, that's available both online and in person. And also the student union has an advice service. Now we are located on a brand new campus in a fabulous building. Probably I'd like, I, I have to say the best building UCL currently owns. That's a, a view of our campus. We're on the uh, Olympic Park. It's been completely renovated we have the uh, a Victoria and Albert Museum coming in. The University of Arts London has over 4,000 students on the same you know, property as us. There's um, a theater, the Saddler's Wells. Uh, of course, there's the Olympic Stadium, which is now home to a football team for West Ham. Uh, there's a track and field. It's There's, of course, the water if you're into rowing. Um, so there's lots of opportunities. And of course, we sit next to one of the biggest shopping malls in all of Europe, the Westfields. Uh, transportation's not an issue. Stanford, Stratford uh, International, uh, you can even travel to Paris from there. It's an easy ride into central London on the Elizabeth Line. So it is an exciting location. It has that vibrance of someplace that's new, that's uh, really developing and, and changing and, and defining uh, London. So I think you'll really enjoy living uh, at East London. Uh, that red building there on, on, on your, um, I think it's your left, that is student housing. So there's over 600 student uh, rooms that, that are available. Uh, so it's wonderful. You can live and you can study in the same location. There's also just a short minute away from our facilities, also a private Unite uh, facility for student housing. So uh, I can't just say more about that. And then, of course, last but not least, just being in London. London is a beautiful city. It's it's a, a fabulous place to, to live, to learn, uh, lots of free facilities museums, parks, galleries, institutes, uh, sports events, uh, very vibrant tourist attractions. And so there's plenty to do. And it's not surprising that students rank it as, as one of the best cities in the world, if not the top city in the world to be a student. So I hope this uh, presentation was useful. I'm really excited to answer your questions. I can't tell you how passionate I am about the Global Business School for Health. 
I um, had the, the real honor to set up the school two years ago. I believe so firmly in the ethos of this school, the idea of bringing people together to try to address and solve the problems uh, of, of health and health care. We need different thinking. We need people like yourself who are innovators, who are change makers, who are willing to um, take a, a multiple lens at, at what needs to change. So many of the problems today, we can't solve them through our silos of the past. We need to think differently about the future. So thank you. So I'm gonna stop sharing my slides now and then, um, I will take your questions. All right, so, so the one of the question is, is there an online route? No, these are all face-to-face -face programs. If you're interested in an online program, I don't know your uh, background, Georgie Sus, but we do have a, an executive MBA that is online. So you might take a look at that. It might be a more appropriate program for you than the global healthcare management because these programs are in person. Does the desk-based research project mean a literature review? It does not have to be a literature review. Many students last year did do a literature review, but it, I also had uh, a, a student who did an amazing project. Uh, it was looking at the Chinese secondary financial markets and he used uh, data that he came, got, actually got through Yahoo Finance and uh, did a, a, a tremendous piece of research uh, that now he's going on to pursue a PhD with. So uh, desk space can be a literature review and that would be a systematic literature review or, or it can be uh, much more themed and, and a project. How many students are there per year uh, in the cohort? So uh, there are about 220 this year across each route. So each route is almost like its own program. Um, and you also have someone who's in charge of your route. So uh, if we divide that three ways, that's about 75 students on each route. And uh, and as I said, there's some modules that you'll take with other people on other routes. And then there's some modules you get just with those people on your route. What kind of applicants are you? are you really looking for? Okay, well, I like that really. Um, so we're looking for people who are uh, genuinely interested in being health and healthcare. So we're, we're not a substitute. If you want to just have a business degree, then you should go to a business school that only offers a general business degree. If you're interested in having business with health, and you want to you know, do something that would enhance health and healthcare, we're the perfect school for you. And we're actually better than going to another business school uh, because that's our bread and butter. That's our expertise. That's what we're all about. We're about really making society better, making change makers, making people who are really gonna solve all the big issues in health and healthcare. So that's really what we're looking for. Sometimes we get you know, some applicants and um, it's really apparent that they're um, more uh, focused on just a business degree. And that's probably not gonna put you at the top of the list. So make sure that if you're applying to Global Business School for Health, your compelling interest is in health and healthcare. Are students eligible to apply for the M UCL uh, master's bursary for this course? Yes, of course you are, but there are uh, criteria. Um, and I believe some of those bursaries require you to be a UK citizen. Um, so you have to look at those bursaries and, and, and then you can see whether or not you, you meet the criteria. On um, which days are the virtual open days for the other two programs? Well, if you go to our website, you can see the days that those uh, webinars are, and uh, and then uh, you know you can uh, just sign up for them, just like you signed up for this one. 
And uh, Nanda, I wonder if there is funding or scholarships that as an international student that I can consider. Well, as I said, the two that I showed you, the, the ones for women healthcare leaders and also the one for international uh, students, those are ones offered through the department. Those are definitely, um, it's still early on, so I don't know where you're at in the world, but there's the Chevenines and there, you should go to the British Council uh, and see what uh, is on offer there. Uh, look for other scholarships. The, 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 the advantage of applying now and looking now is that you've got time and most of the application deadlines haven't taken place yet. Our applications open right now. They are open right now. So, uh, you know, we, we are taking applications and we will start to process them probably in the next month. Is there an opportunity to take a placement? If so, will the university organize that? We don't have placements in these programs, but we do have opportunities that come along, uh, employers that are looking for people to take on part-time work. We pushing those out to our students through our careers. So, um, and, and there are jobs, there are opportunities. You, again, you have to look for them. The university doesn't organize them for you but they provide you information about them so that you can apply to them. And then um, can I talk about extracurricular activities outside my degree to show passion for this course? Absolutely. You know, we, we want really well-rounded individuals, people who um, want to be engaged. Uh, we're not just a, a collection of programs, we're a school. And so we want people, uh, you know, like Karina, who uh, dedicate their time getting active um, so that we form a, a learning community. And so, uh, you know, if you've already been doing that in your former degree or in your other institution and, and you can exhibit those kinds of behaviors, that means a lot to us and, and to the selection of applicants. Are dorms open for MSC students? Yes, they are. You can apply for UCL housing and you uh, will have an opportunity to get that. I'm, I'm not sure, but I believe that actually students that are um, learning at UCLE get a preference for living in the facilities here at UCLE. Some of us left the universities more than two or three years ago, which at some point causes some sort of anxiety. Is there any support from the university regarding this case? Yes, I think you'll find actually GBSH in general is a very supportive learning environment. We highly appreciate students that come in with prior experience. They enrich the classroom tremendously. Um, and uh, so I wouldn't worry about that. Like I said, we'll give you a, a, a you know, a pre-course, you know, opportunities. You know, I, I have to tell you my own, my own personal journey. I, I started out actually as a Middle East expert. Uh, I studied economics. About midway through my career, that's chapter one. I, I realized that I really was passionate about health and healthcare. That's where I wanted to make a difference. I, I then went back uh, mid, mid, much more than two or three years uh, back and I got a master's in health economics and pharmacoeconomics. Of course, there was a bit of anxiety. It'd been years since I'd been a student. I'd actually been teaching everybody else. And, uh, but once I got into the rhythm of actually learning again, it was fantastic. Um, and, and really one of the highlights and probably the degree that I appreciated the most because I was just in a different place and I had all this uh, learning that I'd done actually in the workplace to reflect on as well. So uh, I think, you know, I would definitely encourage you to apply, not worry. Um, I think, you know, also all students when they come and they make that step up to a master's and it is a step up, it's a, a different kind of learning than you did when you first went into university, you know, um, it, it's a uh, it's very supportive environment and even students that are continuing on, everybody's making that step up. Okay, are we considered UK applicants if we are British citizens? Yes. 
the uh, really citizenship, but have lived and worked overseas for 10 plus years before the, the date of the application. If you have British citizenship, you, you should uh, qualify as a UK applicant. So what will happen is normally what they'll do is, so you make sure, you know, of course, to list that you're a UK citizen. And what they'll do is they'll evaluate your fee status at some part through your application journey. And I would assume that then you would be, uh, you know, classified as, as a UK uh, applicant and, and pay the UK fees. Oh, right. And then uh, is there overlap between the, this MSC and the executive MBA? No, there's not. Uh, it, there are very different experiences and, and different groups of students. So I would say the executive MBA, first of all, is a part-time online two-year program. And it is the target audience there are people who've been out of wor work or who've been in work, sorry, for about five to seven years minimum. Uh, and, uh, and uh, you know, uh, and the average age of a person on our MBA program is 30 plus. Whereas our master's programs tend to have a younger cohort of students. Uh, you know, uh, many of them, like I said, some of them coming, you know, who have decided just to kind of bundle it together and, and do their master's with their uh, right after their undergraduate so they don't go back later. Um, and others that are a few years out, so, some that have been out longer and who want more of a specialized knowledge. Whereas an MBA is very general. So you study a lot of, of, of areas, but in a much more general way, um, you'll also do, uh, you know, it's a very kind of different kind of experience. You'll have a much more practical uh, application. You will also um, have, uh, you know, different kinds of projects. So there is really a difference between the two. I think masters are much more specialized, more focused. And, and designed to give you a, a sense of expertise, whereas MBA is much more about your management, your overall general management journey and experience. So sometimes even people will do an MB MSc at one point in their career, and maybe they go back later on for an MBA when they've got more management experience. So um, I hope that that's helpful. Uh, and we have two MBAs, by the way. So there's an MBA Health, which is an in-person MBA, and then there's the executive MBA, which is an online MBA. And the per in-person MBA tends to be more around 30-ish. The executive MBA tends to be even slightly older than that, much more uh, towards about 35. So um, th those are our MBA programs. Okay, great questions, really good engagement. I now wanna give Karina a chance to talk because uh, I think it's useful as somebody who's actually studying with us to talk a little bit about her experience. So over to you, Karina. Hi everyone, my name is Karina. I applied to UCL with a purely healthcare background. I was a dentist in India. Um, and to add on to some of the questions that Professor Nora answered, our cohort has people ranging from ages 21 to 31 about. So they're people with all different kinds of experience. They've all studied different things in their undergrad, but it's a great learning experience having this diverse cohort because you learn from everyone's different experience and background. So if you do have two or three years of work experience that you're gonna bring a lot to the classroom discussion and you are also at an advantage. So don't be anxious about that, be excited about that. Overall, um, GBSH is a great experience to learn. There's so many extracurricular opportunities extra learning opportunities even outside the classroom, networking opportunities, and the careers fairs are great. So many companies from so many different industries come and you can meet them, talk to them. So it's been amazing for me. So Karina, which route are you doing and how did you decide which route? I've chosen the leadership route. Um, I'm more interested in bringing about effective change in healthcare organizations rather than focusing on a niche like finance or analytics. So the leadership route was a great choice for me, although I'm really interested in some modules from the finance and analytics routes. 
So it was a tough decision. But I think ultimately aligning your choice with where you see yourself working in 10, 15 years would be the best, best way to go about it. That, that's great. And what, what do you plan on doing afterwards? Will you go back into dental practice? Do you have any other kind of ideas? What, do, what, are you, what is your thinking at this point? I think with every day I'm studying on this course, I'm more and more interested in business problems. So um, I'm thinking of going into consulting, healthcare consulting, so that I can create an immediate impact with organizations I work with. That's great. And um, is there any advice that in terms of preparation or your application um, that you would give uh, our, our listeners? I would say apply early. It definitely helps to apply early. Um, your chances could be better of getting accepted if you apply early. So don't procrastinate your application. Apply as soon as you can and give your all to your application. Coming to UCL is a really good choice. So don't take it lightly. And was there any like things that you found more difficult, any tips around your personal statement that you'd like to share? I really struggled with my personal statement because it really gets you thinking, right? You have to think about your whole life, what you really want to do and put it across effectively, but succinctly. Um, I would say don't use AI for it. Just really think about where you're coming from and where you want to go and put that across. And if that comes across honestly and authentically, you're probably going to get in. Great. Very, very, very good. Very sage advice. Um, and how about living in London? Um, how, where do you live? How did you find housing? Uh, was that difficult? I know a lot of people who struggle to get housing in London. Since the prices have increased, the rent has increased everywhere. So it can be a challenge. Um, my advice would be don't rush into booking an accommodation. Really evaluate your options. I think I took three or four months to decide on my housing. I'm currently staying in Islington. I chose not to stay on campus for a number of reasons. I wanted to be able to travel to both the main campus and the East campus to make the most of all the opportunities available to me. Um, university halls are a great idea. A lot of people who live close to campus are really enjoying the convenience of being able to walk to lectures. So if that's something that's important to you, strongly consider the One Pool Street housing. It's a great infrastructure too. And how about uh, work? I don't know if you've got any part-time work or know people who are getting part-time work. Um, what, what could you comment on that? It's definitely challenging to do a part-time job along with your university work. The course is very heavy, work intensive. So if you're good at time management and organizing your day and schedules, you'll be able to do it. Definitely some of my course mates have taken up part-time work, myself included. Um, but you really have to prioritize your coursework when you want to do that. Because at the end of the day, this is what you're here for. Good, good, really good advice. Um, okay, well, look, are there any other questions that uh, either Karina or myself can answer to, for you today? We'll just give it one more minute. Again, if you've got specific needs or questions, you can always email us and the admissions. We're pretty good at getting back to you. And uh, we want to be as supportive as possible in helping you uh, make this really what I consider a very life-changing, um, transformational decision uh, and experience. So again, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Karina. It's really good to see you. And thank you for joining today. And uh, I think maybe we have another question that's come in. Hi, Professor uh, Nora and Karina. Uh, I have a question for you, Karina. What job positions are common among global healthcare management graduates? Hi, Ibrahim. Uh, as Professor Nora mentioned, um, consulting, pharmacy, working in the NHS, working as part of the public se sector health are very common jobs that a lot of me and my course mates are working toward. Um, Professor Nora, do you have any insights from the previous batch about what kind of jobs they Yeah, do? so that, that's about right. Um, a lot of, lot of uh, interest uh, in the NHS. Um, also, I just want to add to that, we've had a number of students who um, 
are starting their own business. Uh, so they've, they've uh, joined incubators or, um, you know, at UCL, we have a, one called the Hatchery. We've had a couple of our students uh, win some competitions, uh, you know, want, want, with their uh, business ideas. So that's another area that we see a, a lot of interest of students today. Uh, but uh, consultancy is definitely high on the list. And we've had a number of students secure jobs with uh, consultancy firms. And, uh, and, and as I said, uh, also graduate training programs are very popular with students. Um, and, uh, and those you have to apply very early to. So we have students even in uh, Karina's cohort who are already applying and interviewing for some of those uh, for the year after. Okay, so thank you. Thank you so much. It's been great meeting all of you and we look forward to, to receiving your applications. Take care, bye. Professor Nora, there's one more question. Oh, is there one more question? Okay. Oh, it just says, thank you both so much for, for your time today. You're very, very welcome. There's something about a GMAT score. Um, is it too late to apply in late November? Now I have a GMAT score of 700. Is it useful for the application? Yep. I would say uh, it's definitely, uh, it's too, is it too late to apply in late November? No. Um, you can apply, our, our admissions are open all year. I think what the point Karina was making is if you apply before January, you have a higher chance because we get a lot of applications. And so we've given most of the spots by then. It doesn't mean that there aren't uh, still some spots, but it, it becomes much more competitive as we go across the year because we have what's called rolling admissions. So we, um, we, we take at, and evaluate applications at different points across the year rather than waiting to one point to evaluate the applications. But yes, absolutely. Um, late November would be fine. All right. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.